started cinema a year after or a year with the establishment of Lumiere in Paris in December 1895, it's cinema. The first projection of a moving picture was in Egypt in 1896. So Africa was not very far away, but being under the control of the Western uh, uh, occupation, uh, we've been delayed. But in Egypt, for some reasons, this old industry have started, uh, and we had the first exposition of cinema in 1896 in Cinema Santi in Alexandria, and then in Port Said in 1898. Uh, just a glimpse on Egypt cinema also. The first cinema theater was established by Lumiere himself, the father, I think, of, uh, or the founding father of the moving cinema or pictures uh, in the mid-January 1897. Uh, the June, to, uh, uh, June 20th, 1907, was the start of the first Egyptian film production. Uh, many movies have been produced and many short films uh, was also presented. The silent movie Zainab in uh, uh, March uh, 1930 uh, have uh, truly uh, made a big difference in Venice uh, Film Festival. Uh, the cinema went on uh, after the revolution uh, and before, just before that, the Egyptian government have established uh, its first studio, and this Masr studio was among the industries that the state wanted to own. The state wanted to establish uh, industries, and among the leading industries was the cinema industry, and uh, uh, that was in 1935. Uh, uh, so uh, the industry of cinema was realized of being one of the most important tools and lucrative and uh, uh, successful uh, industry. Many of our youngsters in your age went to France and went to Germany for technical uh, studies and they came back uh, to uh, produce uh, their uh, cinema and up till now thousands of those movies were made and Egypt established its name in uh, the world stage uh, of cinema. Uh, more uh, attention it was given in the 60s when we had a socialist regime under Nasser and the tool uh, uh, of media and cinema was recognized and everybody understood that there is a need to establish its own institution. So the Egyptian uh, known uh, cinema institute was established first time in uh, 57, the oldest in Africa and the Middle East, and uh, it carries many objectives. We have it here uh, in details. There is uh, two main uh, uh, festivals in Egypt, one in Cairo, one in Alexandria, and both enjoys an international reputation. Just to conclude, cinema in Africa is not a new phenomenon. It's an industry that is financially uh, very lucrative and important. Size of production is huge. Uh, however, still, as Africa suffers from many uh, economic difficulties, this industry requires a lot of effort and support and financial uh, requirements that definitely through the support now we are getting from different parts of the world, Africa cinema as Africa economy uh, will be uh, the future uh, of growth in the cinema uh, industry. And as much as our economy grew, cinema is growing with us. Uh, it is true that uh, any revolution and any transition uh, is always difficult. And it carries uh, blood and pain uh, sometimes. Cinema is not very far from witnessing the moment as I said, uh, in the last uh, year's production, we noted like four or five major films on Arab Spring, besides documentaries, 
short movies and songs that expressed the moment. Definitely today, with the move towards democracy is crystallizing that Egypt is seeking freedom, democracy, and social justice, not a dictatorship, nor a religious uh, autocracy. So uh, I think cinema will capture the moment and uh, will uh, produce its uh, movies and documentaries, which we still can see in the new social media tools now. You just click Egypt in the social media, and YouTube will bring you thousands of footage where you people as producers or actors or uh, uh, whatever is your speciality can make use of. Uh, but people also living there, like the central Cairo parts that you are mentioning, uh, can definitely do their own footage. Uh, I think there is a big change now in the tools of this industry. It is not very traditional. It's not anymore very conventional. Uh, a lot of changes have uh, happened in, first, the way people write their own scripts, who are writing the scenario or the scripts, what are the tools used even in taking pictures. Uh, a still camera can do a lot, a documentary can do a lot, and there is a transboundary, like you've been in central Cairo and you are not Egyptian, so you can feel the moment and do your own movie. There is an, a globalized world now that makes cinema an open gate to all culture, all members, all parts are open. So I definitely will see the outcome of this changes in the cinema very soon, and not necessarily by a hand of an African or an Egyptian or an uh, European. It's an open theater now. I can do my feature here in Germany talking about uh, Africa or talk about Egypt. We can uh, host in Berlin something related to our continent. This is what new cinema. I think you people as youngsters have to bear in mind while you are studying. You are not doing a static book reading material. You are in a different world and that affects your message. Uh, when you travel uh, deep in the continent and you drive your car in Kampala or Harare or uh, Lagos, you look at the African huts and houses, you don't know what's inside, truly. Even being in Africa, I don't know how the African family lives. I don't know how do they love each other. But if you ask me about an American family or a French family, I can tell you inside this house, this is the living room, this is the bedroom, this is the bathroom, this is how do they love, how do they act, how do they, they, they react even in emotions. But with us in Africa, we lack even to know about what's happening in our Africa family. How do we react as a collective tribe or a collective family? How do we present our culture to the others? So I, I agree with you. There is lack of introducing Africa to Africans themselves. As I told you, I don't know exactly what's happening in the streets of Kampala comparing to what's happening in LA or in even Tokyo. Uh, and this is, I think, not only uh, uh, the duty and responsibility of Africa cinema or African artists, but it is the duty of the world community that there is a lot of wonderful history in Africa. You go to, say, I'll just take the example of Harare, for example. There is a civilization that was there up till uh, the entrance or the enter of the uh, colonial power. Uh, there were a lot of reading material, go to Tambaktu, go to many places. In Africa, you will find a lot of stories to dig and find. I think the future carry a message that as much as the Africa economy now is moving ahead, I think Africa cinema will couple with that and move ahead too. We need to understand that from a commercial point of view, I don't think we are lacking much behind. Uh, we have theaters, 
We produce cinema, as I said, the new, new Hollywood in Nigeria is the third largest producer, though not in long metrage or long movies or feature movies, but more in short uh, uh, videos. But it sells a lot and it makes money. In Egypt, also cinema make a lot of money. But it's not about commercialization. Our, as I said, uh, uh, festivals in Burkina Faso or in Morocco or in Egypt or in Nigeria helps you as African artists or international uh, partners to this continent to introduce your ideas and views. So there is one commercial part which I'm not very preoccupied because it will definitely uh, carry on successfully. Uh, uh, because our economy is growing also, and that helps every aspect of life, including cinema, as well as uh, the trends. You people have to introduce one good movie, could impact, as I still remember uh, hearing uh, many African leaders in Africa uh, 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 struggle in Cairo University when I was young. Uh, I hope I'm still is, but a uh, long time back, I saw uh, many freedom fighters in Cairo University, and I saw many documentaries to Lumumba and to uh, Nukroma and to the history of the continent is registered. It's up to you as young artists to tap on these treasures and bring it into either a new feature or a new documentary and one successful movie can identify a country. I remember Mother India, for example, in all Mother Day, I saw this movie. And it's a wonderful picture that when you talk about India, you don't talk about Taj Mahal, you talk about Mother India movie. Or if you want to talk about Algeria, you talk about the battle, the battle of Algeria. So your duty is to introduce new Africa, is to uh, forget about our giraffe and lions and uh, uh, landscape and to go into the Africa family. How do we live? How do we love? How do we move uh, ahead in our struggle? How do even we go in boats to uh, certain parts and lose our life? This is, I think, your responsibility. And uh, cinema, I think, is an important tool uh, of media. It helps you present your case, like today we are here, uh, present in the Midwest, where my country is facing uh, problems. Uh, but why should we talk about Africa cinema? It carries many messages to me, uh, communicating on culture issues while there is political uh, and economic challenges facing the continent or facing my country is very important. It's a very powerful uh, tool uh, that I respect. I use all the communication skills I learned. I understand also the importance of the culture aspect in our diplomatic work and within the culture, uh, and within the cinema, we can talk about our revolution, right? We can talk about uh, our poverty. We can talk also about uh, Africa uh, landscape in a different look. Uh, we, as I said, need to learn about the continent. We need to introduce it better to the world. We have more than giraffe and lions. We have more than Teresa and uh, Shita. We have wonderful cities. And we have old culture. Nobody really uh, knows when I give the very famous uh, uh, example of the culture that existed before colonialization. Nobody really in Africa cinema visited this chapter and many other uh, chapters. There is leaders that have gone missing in, let's say, our concentration on development and economy. Uh, we have cultural leaders, we have uh, economic leaders, we have many good examples. So back to your question, sorry I went a little bit further. Yes, it is very important, it's a tool of communication. I respect cinema, I respect media, and uh, I am considering uh, a diplomat also is part of those skilled talents who uh, present their country and bring their message. The more you uh, do uh, communication skill, the easy it is for you. Because you know how to write. You know how to express yourself. You know how to sympathize with different. And you know how to present also your continent and your country. And you are uh, 
a global citizen also because I'm in Berlin and we are of a different race, colors and culture. So this is what can bring us together, cinema and culture. I, I think it's, uh, maybe it was vocal, the state was vocal uh, in the 60s when socialist kind of thoughts were around. Uh, but truly, cinema has to stand on its feet. Uh, state has a duty, definitely, to assist in the infrastructure. Like in my case, or in Egypt, we have uh, the uh, media city. Uh, the media city is studios, labs, uh, training centers, roads, uh, open cities for pictures. This is what the state is doing. And then, soon after, they give it to a private company to run, to hire, to make money out of it. So how can the state start and initiate a program then maybe privatize it uh, or establish a company to, to, to run it. State has a very important role, but uh, we have also to uh, work with other partners. A good African producer with a good script can get a French or Italian or a German uh, partner, or maybe a partner within the continent itself. So uh, I think there is a need to have the state involved in Africa because, of course, as you said, economy of the industry is so important. We need education also. We need to train our people because unless we concentrate on education in the field, when I read my dates in 1907, we sent technicians to Berlin from Egypt to learn photography and cinematography. And we sent uh, uh, people to, to France to learn acting. And then we established our school. So if we want our cinema uh, to flourish, we need to put an emphasis on education in the field. Second, we need, of course, the state to invest. Uh, and we need to have a reward back for those who take this venture through, and we need to learn technically, I think, about the new uh, avenues of this industry, internet, uh, social media, and stuff. Those are the elements that comes to mind. States has an important role. International community, uh, I uh, think, uh, while they are designing their uh, aid program to Africa, they don't consider uh, the culture aspect much. So it is our country's duty to ask the foreign supporters or uh, partners to inject uh, more support and aid program into their uh, developmental projects in Africa. It will definitely help health, disease, and uh, bring us more uh, up than we are now. Uh, mixed with many challenges we are facing. This is the colonial divide. North Africa is more Arabic. I was in Nairobi University myself. I studied there. And I was asked once, uh, who is the African? And uh, I was among 35 uh, other diplomats from all, walk, uh, all countries of Africa. And, uh, is it the color that really identified the continent? Because I can see many black Jamaicans, for example. It's not about the color then. It is about geographical location type. Madagascar and uh, Mauritius are not part of the continent, but they are truly African. So it's not the geographical location. Haiti maybe look darker than we do, but in Upper Egypt, we have people in Aswan who are darker than many uh, the, there is black Americans, but they are not Africans uh, per se. So who is the true African? I need to answer your question. Uh, I can see many whites who carried the message of uh, anti-apartheid uh, and freedom fighters who are not colored. Uh, maybe you can see uh, people who betrayed the continent, like Chombi vis-a-vis -vis Lumumba in uh, Central uh, Africa, uh, sorry, in uh, RDC. So it's not the color, it's not the geographical location, 
that makes you African. It's not also the European divide of North Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, Eastern Africa. We are not a cake. We are a united uh, continent. Uh, African is the one who believe in the continent, who believe that his success is more likely if we are united. And our failure is more likely if we kept the divide. I can trade, like I imported for centuries the tea from Sri Lanka and India, with due respect. I love India, I lived in Sri Lanka, I know the place, people are very kind. But why, why not from Kenya? It's shorter and it is the taste that we like, dark tea. So we are the second largest importer of tea worldwide, but now we import from Kenya. It is shorter uh, distance and it's my continent. And when Kenya uh, is uh, financed uh, by 100 million worth of US dollars from Egypt, imports of uh, tea, they import our rice. So this is how Africa will live together. Back to cinema. As I said, we don't know much about us in Africa. In Africa. So you imagine that Europeans carry the same old image uh, about the continent. You, as African young artists, and lovers of the continent from different countries. Uh, you need to help this continent in many ways. We have youngsters I met during my studies in Nairobi who wants to immigrate, but they don't know why they want to immigrate to Ireland or to uh, Auckland in, uh, in uh, New Zealand or far away in a very cold place in Canada, but they want to immigrate. This is a tissue for any artist who wants to make a good movie. Uh, why can't we, uh, as cinematographers, help Africa to remain in Africa? How can we make this cake kind of a unit? Even in Europe now there is a realization that you have to deal with one African language. What is language? I saw a Canadian movie that carries no language at all, was almost silent. It was about pre-historical tribes talking to each other with a language that nobody understand. And I understood the movie completely. Language is a tool of communication. You spoke to me in English, speaks in German, speak in the language you know. People who don't speak at all uh, can communicate with you. Next month, no, in October actually, I'm bringing in here in Berlin a troop of 50 young girls, they all blind, they all from Egypt, but they play fairly harmony and music, like Mozart, without reading, without, but they communicate through music. So cinema can truly play this role, make a good Senegalese movie and sell it well in Europe. Then you add to the history of your cinema and you add to your country, it's a message. I truly think cinema is a message. So I'm afraid I'm not affiliate uh, because I fought all over my career against this cultural divide, linguistic barriers, colors, religions. Uh, in Africa, we are united. We love Mandela. We listen to Malaika. We understood Swahili. We can talk. Come to Egypt, you will find more darker people than you are, but they are truly African. They go to north in Alexandria, you will find very white people, but they are truly African. Africa is a field. It's not a geographical presence, nor a color. This is what I always say. Thank you.